I want to just speak, uh, just going to do these 14 verses in 1 Samuel 7. But it comes round so wonderfully to where we started on Friday. What, and I'm doing this with you in mind, Carol, as well. Deliverance from the Philistines. The Philistines are an enemy who roll like Philistines. They roll in dust. They're the ones, they don't dig wells, but they throw dirt in your well. And we're all accustomed to that. People that, you know, I was gushing with water till I had a conversation for half an hour with that lady. I am panting <laughs> with thirst. We don't want people around who are going to kick dirt in our wells. That's our life source, isn't it? But have a look at this. And the men of kiriath Jerem came and took the ark of the Lord. The answer to the Philistine is the ark of the Lord, where the blood is where the mercy seat is, where the manna was, where the rod that sprouted of the priest. You've got to bring the ark into the camp when you're in trouble. See him coming in in all his majesty and splendor. And they brought it into the house of Abinadab, whose name means father, think of the Bond family, of generosity. Father of generosity, father of mobility. Isn't that lovely? The ark of the Lord is brought into the house of the father of mobility. Look what it says just after that. Into the house of the father of ability, mobility, father of generousness, generosity, on the hill. Hey, we're on an exalted place. We're not subject to the world. We have, we've been elevated through the ministry of Christ and consecrated Eleazar. My God is help. Oh, hallelujah. So when the ark is present, we're aware we've got a father of generosity and we've got a God of help. Consecrated Eleazar, his son, to keep the ark of the Lord. Now, here we go. So the ark of the Lord that represents the Godhead is to be handled by people who know that God is generous. We give to God sometimes, or we don't give to God. And that's the problem. If people in our church tithed, we wouldn't have a problem. We would be able to do it. But because people don't, you're having to draw. I'm, I know some of us do, and I always have, and I'm not interested if you don't. I always will, because I believe that is exactly how I should have lived my life. And I've never looked back, and I never will. I know. Oh, oh, the ark of the Lord is in my house, he's in my heart, and I serve a father of generosity. He's worth all, much more than my fiddly 10%. He's worth everything I've got. On the hill, and he consecrated Eleazar, his son, to keep the ark of the Lord. My God is help. So he's speaking to Nathan here, and he's speaking to Daniel, <laughs> and he says, What's he just said to you, you young men? Don't begrudge your dad and your mom giving 10% of their income to God if they do, because they serve a God of generosity, they serve a God of help. I'm giving unto God, and at the time I need it, God will give it to me. But he will use people to do that. So we need to ask ourselves at the very beginning, my heart string towards my money has to have Jesus in the middle of it. We're not to love the world or the things of the world. This is not a call for your finances, but it's just here. Verse 2, it came about that from it and it came about from the day that the ark remained at kiriath Jerem that the time was long, for it was 20 years, and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. Then Samuel spoke to all the house of Israel, saying, "If you ret by the word 20 is expectancy, two times responsibility. This is the question. If you return to the Lord with all your heart, now, think of what you've just read about the 33 years in Leviticus 17. If you return to the Lord with all your heart and remove the foreign gods and the Ashtoreth from among you and direct your heart to the Lord and serve him alone, and he will deliver you 
from the hand of the Philistines. Hallelujah. Isn't it a wonderful order? Because I know time's going. So the sons of Israel, they were obedient. They removed the Baals and the Ashtaroth, and they served the Lord alone. And Samuel said, gather all Israel to Mizpah. That is the word, isn't it? Meaning to watch over. Oh, it, those bracelets, those necklaces that come together. The Lord will watch over between me and you when we are apart. And I will pray to the Lord for you. Now, look what happens. I know you're yawning there, Vid. Try and think you're watching a movie. You'll be wide awake. That's the lie of the devil. It's a lie. That when you put away false gods, the answers in verse 6, they gathered to Mizpah, knowing that the Lord was watching, and they drew water, and they poured it out before the Lord as a sign of repentance. What did Pontius Pilate do? Wash it. Oh, I'm not bearing the guilt of this man. I'm innocent of the blood of this man. But you see, that if you remove a foreign god from you today, the idolatry of fear, whatever it may be, remove it, you will be moved to repent. They prayed, and it says, they poured out the water before the Lord, fasted on that day, and said there, we have sinned. You see, that's the answer. How many of you think you're still, in some way, sinning against the Lord in your evil heart? In some way, in some way, you're sinning, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I want to live a carefree life. I want to put you first. I want to honor you. I want to live a godly life. But at the moment, I'm still not doing it. This is comfort, and it gets better. We have sinned against not anyone else but the Lord. And Samuel judged the sons of Israel at Mizpah. Here we go. You've got a man or a woman here who's repented. I'm not going to do that anymore by your goodness and grace, Father. I have washed my hands of that. I'm going to, uh, I'm saying sorry to you, Lord. I fasted. I've shown myself. I'm studying now to show myself approved of God. Now look at the immediate answer. Do, verse 7. When the enemy, the Philistines, heard that the sons of Israel had gathered to Mizpah, so there's a gathering 12 times a year here in Zarephath. You can guarantee there'll be loads of interruptions for you to get there. There'll be lots of temptations to just about be somewhere else. Hey, I'm not calling you to say, because I don't mind if you're not here, I'll still be here. It's not what I'm saying. You see, the enemy is determined. If you're going to be right with the Lord, the Philistines aren't happy. Now, when the Philistines heard that the sons of Israel had gathered to the coming together, the Lord of the Philistines, they went up against Israel. Oh, I'm only going up when things start to go right. And when the sons of Israel heard it, they were afraid. Now, that's where we're on, Carol. When they heard the gathering around me, the thoughts are coming to me. When the sons of Israel, people of God, heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. But they shouldn't have been. Do you understand? This is, so if I struggle, I get this out, and I increase my faith by reading it. Because this is a great... Faith comes from here, but it gets good. Verse 8, then the sons of Israel said to Samuel, oh, go and find a godly person. Do not cease to cry to the Lord our God for us. And what is the cry? That he may save us from the hand of the Philistines. I know you've gone hot again. No, you're okay. Samuel, what is the answer? When you're crying out to God, Samuel took a milk lamb, a baby lamb, a suckling lamb. That lamb, of course, is Christ. I'm to give Christ to you when you're in trouble, and you're to give Christ to me. And he offered it for a whole burnt offering. So this lamb, this lamb was going to have to be sacrificed. And Samuel cried to the Lord with the lamb for Israel. And look at the answer. And the Lord answered him. There's a lamb with your repentance today. There's a lamb with your prayer today. There's a lamb for you today. The lamb has been given. He has become the burnt offering to the Lord. The Lord answered him. Oh, it gets better. Verse 10. While Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, can you see? And the Philistines drew near to battle. 
How many people do you know? I knew a man in the church, and, that, and I, that's why I say take, take the bread and the wine and make sure your heart is right to take the bread and the wine. That's why it's there at least every seventh day. You must be right with the Lord to take the bread and wine, but don't be deceived into not taking the bread and wine. He's urging you to repent, to put yourself right, to say, Lord, where I am failed you, if I've got anything in my heart, please show me. So Samuel's offering up the... So this, the lamb has been given. The Philistines drew near what to do to battle against Israel. You see, and this, this partly is funny, that one of the ladies that we knew in the church that I've been in for 14 years saw a certain member of the congregation every time he spoke. She only saw him undressed. And uh, uh, you wouldn't have wanted to see that, by the way, but... Uh, uh, she was plagued with this thought. And I said, this, is a th this may not even be your thought. This is a Philistine drawing near because you're trying to draw near to God. And she, anyway, this one Sunday I went and she ran out of the church and I went after and she said, it was even worse. I was in the bath <laughs> and he was scrubbing my back. You see, it was all around the breaking of the bread. Now, the truth was, wasn't it? She had to continue to seek the Lord. And uh, ultimately, I don't know what happened to her, but it was only at that time that flash came to her. Well, I can stand before you and say that has never happened to me as it happened to you. But there are times when the enemy will come or you will get a thought. It may not even be yours. You are not worthy to come before God. You're not worthy to take the bread and the wine. The answer is, Father, into your hands, I commend my whole life. And where I have sinned, I'm asking for your forgiveness. And I thank you for the body given and the blood shed. And I'm taking it in Jesus' name. Do you do that? That's what you should do. Okay. So Samuel was offering up the burnt offering. And the Philistines drew near for one reason, to battle against. Here's the answer, Carol. To battle against. Look what happened. But the Lord, and I highlighted this many years ago, and I put lots of little dots under it. But because a lamb has been given as the burnt offering, the enemy will draw near because our sins have been forgiven, past, present, and future. But the Lord thundered. How dare you? This is my child. This is why my lamb's blood was shed. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder. On that day that the sacrifice is being given, on that day, who did he thunder against? Not the poor creature begging God for forgiveness. Who did he thunder against? The Philistines. And he went and it says, and what did he do? And he confused them so that they were routed before Israel. Is there a hallelujah in there? Hallelujah. Come and have a look at this chapter again and again. When you, when the suckling lamb has been given, a milk lamb, a, a, a young lamb, a lamb subject to ridicule, it says in one Hebrew section. But you see this crying, the lamb has been given, the burnt offering has died. The Philistine will still draw near, but the Lord thundered with a great thunder. And it says in your margin, that word thunder is call. It's a bath call, bath call. K-O-L, the voice of the Lord splits the logs. The voice of the Lord sets the forest on fire. Psalm 29, which is the second coming of Christ. But shall we carry on, Carol? And there, and the men of Israel, you've got to go out after your devils. Fear, I'm going to name you as fear, and I'm going to give you a lesson in the salvation of the milk lamb. I am living under the power and the authority of the blood. That's how you rout the enemy, because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You speak it out. You, I said, Lord, I'm filling this bathroom. I'm filling this kitchen. I'm filling this bedroom. I'm filling my sad, adulterous house with a voice that says, I'm to rout my enemy with the precious blood of the milk lamb that has been offered for me. And what does that do? What does that do? That brings you into the place that God wants you to be. You've got to pursue the enemy with one reason, to use him 
as a reason for you to proclaim the goodness of God. Proclaim the goodness of God. The men of Israel, verse 11, and here it is. Went out of Mizpah, pursued the Philistines, and struck them down as far as Bel, as below. You've got to get under. Beth means house of. Car means prancing, dancing lamb. Because you're in your victory, that lamb is now living his life in you. It comes from the word springing lamb, dancing lamb, house of the lamb. Isn't that wonderful? Everything is the victory of the skipping lamb. Do you want to make sure? It's all in your notes if you were here yesterday. If you want to just turn to 1033, please. How does that make you feel? We've had it in our prayers this morning. The skipping lamb, the skipping goat up in En Gedi. Those, our lamb is not dead. The milk lamb lives again, would you say? The house of the skipping lamb. I think it's too wonderful for words. It's too wonderful for words. The beauty. 1033, page 1819, Beth Carr. Beth car. It also means house of pasture. House of Beth car means the house of the lamb. But it actually means in ancient Hebrew and from the root, it's more than the lamb. It's the lamb of pasture and it's a skipping lamb because it's a dancing lamb. And I'm going to show you 1033. Can you see where it says Beth car? Beth car. Has anyone got that? House of Pasture, and it says from 1004, okay, meaning a house, a dwelling, a temple, which we know. And it then turns us to 3733, 3733. Remember, this is how the Bible would be written in the Hebrew, and that we've nearly finished. Now, have a look at this. Have a look at this. Can you see the word car in the sense of plumpness, full of fat? Fat is anointing in the word of God. A ram as full grown and fat, including a battering ram. Yes, on the altar. As butting, hence a meadow, which is why it's called the lamb of pasture. As for the sheep, a masculine noun meaning pasture and a battering ram. Have you found it in your Bible yet, Sharon? Because we've got, have you found it yet, darling? It's okay. Just for you, it's just the idea that it's a blunt head. Mark. Well, a blunt head is how you butt, head yeah. butt. Yeah. <laughs> Think yeah. of that. <laughs> okay, darling. Uh, you do not know what's coming from them lovely lips, do you, Lou? So what he's saying is that lamb, did, he is the burnt offering, but he is not dead. I said to Alec the other day, because his electric sweat in his car, and now we get out of here. He said, oh, I'd do it. I said, how would you do it, getting through that car? He said, I'd headbutt it. And I went, I still don't think you'd look, I still don't think you'd get out. But now David's bought me a hammer. Now, from there, because you're still saying, where does it, are you saying in your heart, but where does it say dancing? Is anyone saying that here? I'm so switched on all the time. She said dancing. I want her to show me dancing. It's from 3769. It tells you to go to 3769. <laughs> 3769. Can you see? Kara. It should read Kara. A primitive route to dance, i.e., to whirl. My saviour. Where? Did, where did, where did um, Elisha come from? Meadow of dancing. <laughs> I don't think David defeated Gideon. Yeah, okay. Yeah? Yes, yes. No, that's right. You got it. You got it. 
How are you doing, Dave? You couldn't have a lovelier family. Your two lovely sons are here. You've been given the top performance place in Elijah. The world is good. You've got lovely Iris sat next to you. Do you think this is a, Do you think this is 14 verses of instruction? Do you? I feel ashamed in a way to handle such wonderful truth. Because if I don't live in this truth, I have no right to say it to you. But I do. Do you think you live in this truth yet, June? She does. She does. Yeah. Because your lamb, your milk lamb, when they call out, please help us, the milk lamb, the suckling lamb is the answer. But then he says, look, 11, the men of Israel went out of Mizpah, pursued the Philistines and struck them down as far as below. You've got to get under the ministry of the lamb. You can't do it in your own strength. Be where your lamb is not dead. He's alive. And what is more, he's able to butt. But he's a, he is dancing. He's alive. Elisha came from the meadow, Mahola, the meadow of dancing. The ministry of heaven. They skipped their back legs. And he puts his head forward. Yeah. 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 Now, we're not stretching anything here, are we? We're not, are we? We're just trying to say, Lord, I want to appropriate this living word to me. As the man went out into the wilderness and did not know where he was going and did not know about the 33, he did not know the goat would become synonymous with the life of the man of 33 and a half who became the scapegoat for Israel on the day of of their atonement, so to speak. His blood was on the altar of Calvary. You're going to pursue your enemy as far as below the dancing lamb. Then, here's the stone. Then, Samuel took the stone that crushes the economic union in Daniel chapter 3, isn't it? The stone that crushes all other empires. And he set it between Mizpah and Shen and named it Ebenezer, my stone of help. It says it there. The stone, who's your stone of help? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, hallelujah. Now, and what's the declaration with Ebenezer? Thus far, under the blood of the dancing lamb, the Lord has helped me. How dare I doubt him again? He is not dead. He is alive. And he is full of laughter as Isaac, and he is dancing. So the phil- So look at the answer. You've got the stone of help. Look what the answer is, Carol. Verse 13. The Philistines were subdued and they did not come anymore within the border of Israel. Now I say to that, did you hear that devil? Did you hear that? My lamb is not dead. My lamb's blood has been shed for me and he is alive. Hallelujah. And look at this. And look Carol, and the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines. How many of the days of Samuel, Carol? All, every day, every minute of the day, every doubt, every fear, every unbelief. It gets better to finish, 14. The cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored. My mind has come back. I could breathe again. Pardon? It can't, well, that's a, what a good idea. Is it 10 cities, says Carol? Yes. It can be, you see, this is the whole victory, the whole pattern all the time. A soul is never going to move the ark. A soul is never going to say, my God's a God of generosity. This is why I give him. Yeah. So when I say to you, Pit, uh, uh, Vid, because I care about you, I'm going to pay you, but you're going to tithe out of that payment because I've watched you get in so much debt. I think there's an authority that comes. Abraham tithed to Melchizedek because he recognized his greatness. I know you have. I know you will have. But it, yeah. (laughs) I'm only paying you if you tithe. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, but you should. You should. And Derek should have been doing it with you for 20 years. Shouldn't you, Derek? You should. I'm not bothered what you think about me. 
but I am bothered about trying to put people in a right. If you don't give to God, but you want him to give everything to you, he or not got a relationship going that involves where your heart is, and your heart is money, because you're frightened. It said, what did it say, that 50,000 pensioners died last year through cold? 50,000 pensioners. With the sixth biggest economy in the world, they died for cold. What would keep your heart safe if you're a pensioner? I can afford my electric this year. So you're tempted not to give. Do you understand? It's against us all the time. You understand? But this is it, Carol. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines, so that he's doing it for you all the days of Samuel. These cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored to Israel from Ekron. Ekron means to, um, it, it means to completely obliterate, to exterminate, to eradicate. You've got to eradicate the lies of Satan. And every time you give to God, the devil will say, you might need that. Has that ever happened? I know, it's right, you're, you're so right. It's like you're putting it back in the economy. Yeah. It's true, it's yeah. true, it's true. But I can see, I know. You know when you look at people, they are 100% for Christ. They're edging their bets. They've got to keep a little bit back. Telling your prayers, tell that you don't pray, tell that you, you can see. But this whole throbbing life of the lamb in you is give it to my father. Exactly. That he will give it back. This is so wonderful. Even to Gath, which is where, who was defeated? The man from Gath is Goliath. And he was defeated. And Israel delivered their territory from the hand of the Philistines. So there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. Now, just to finish, if you just go to Revelation, please. Are you fit? Yes, that's right. Uh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Some, if you look in the Hebrew, will see it. Yeah. We've only got Revelation chapter 5. My lamb is alive. He's in the midst of beasts. In the, he's in, right in the middle of the beast of a miserly spirit. You can see it in people's faces, can't you? If you can't give to the Lord in worship and praise, yeah, you can see some people, something's behind their faces sometimes. Yes, and she walked down. She says, how are you, Jew? I said, yeah, I'm okay, thanks. How are you? She's depressed. And what I want to say is, then you were disobedient. How can you be depressed? How can you be depressed? Just by looking at his word for three hours today, how dare you be depressed? Think about it like that. How dare you be depressed? How dare you tread underfoot what he has revealed to you? Through any idiot, his word will speak as truth. You're very brave. You're very brave. I'm going off now to counsel. Well, I, I'm going to tell you, I wouldn't want that counsel coming to my door. That counsel can't help me. My lamb is not dead. He's not a burnt offering. He's dancing. He's going to bring heaven down again. Yeah. Michael, uh, but you know, Mikael, she never, she was only known as Saul's sister, but never was known as David's wife, even though, because she was, the, that's the ungod, she was the ungodly people, but the remnant of Israel are known <coughs> as David's wife. She was only ever known as Saul's sister. She never passed into the royal blood of David. Isn't that terrible? So I don't want to be a Mikael. I, I, I want to be someone who, who will go along with wholeheartedly praising him and wondering about the man in the wilderness who had the mystery of the 33. You know, really, but not seeing it, not seeing all of it. Verse 5. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne, a book written inside and on the back sealed up with seven seals. So we've got <laughs> the number of finishedness. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who, who is worthy to open the book and to break 
its seals. And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the book or to look into it. And I began to weep greatly, says John, because no one was found worthy to open the book or to look into it. And one of the elders, he said to me, stop weeping. Behold, the lion that is from the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has overcome. So as to open the book and its seven seals. Are you going to see something wonderful here? I saw... It says, that word I don't think is right between. Have a look in your margin. And it says, I saw in the middle of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the middle of the elders. I think that sounds better than the between. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I saw in the middle of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the middle of the elders a lamb standing as if slain. Do you see? Having seven horns, seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. So once you get the lamb, you get a series of three sevens. As we were looking yesterday, the time of the tribulation will end with the appearance of the lamb with the seven, seven, seven. Then I thought, go what you know where we're going. From yesterday, Genesis 21, and we're finishing just in a moment. The enemy here again is the Philistines. But Isaac, Isaac is born. Genesis 21, verse 1, speaks about Isaac. By the way, the lamb slain has now become the lion. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He has stripped our chains, broke them and freed us. Now he is our hope of victory. A strength in a time of weariness. A tower in a time of war. Oh, he is the king of Israel. But it, the lamb slain is the lion. The lion is in the midst of the beasts. And just in chapter 6, the, the horses are starting to come out of heaven. Uh, and all, this is all to do with the 777 seven, seven is repeated once he's identified. The lamb is identified as the lion. All glory is going to be seen. Genesis 20, we looked at this yesterday, starts with the birth of Isaac. Then the Lord took note of Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah, so Sarah conceived and bore a son to Abraham in his old age at the appointed time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham, now think of the lamb dancing, Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, Laughter, <laughs> laughter, hallelujah, laughter. In the middle of our wretchedness, we've got one who knows how to put his head back and to laugh and to say, you're my children, you're my redeemed ones. I am the one. I've got a plan for the whole world, you know. But look at this. When you get to 28, a covenant is made regarding seven ewe lambs. The oath has been made. As soon as Isaac is born, there is an association with a lamb. Can you see? Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves. And Abimelech said to Abraham, what do these seven ewe lambs mean, which you are set by themselves? And he said, you shall take these seven ewe lambs. Seven, 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 an association with a lamb and a man who knows how to laugh. We've come to Revelation. Once the lamb is identified, who has been slain as the lion, you have got again a triple seven. Hallelujah. What do you say? Hallelujah. Well, glory. We're trusting you, Father. We're trusting you. The oath was made. The oath with seven. You always completion. As in the seed book of Genesis, right to the end of Revelation. 
then, you know, you turn the page around and just, the offering, this son, this son of the three, this lamb, this Isaac, is now going to have to be offered, Sharon. Yeah. Take your son. And as we said in the Hebrew, it's please take your son. Compassion. Do you know there's 410 times in the Old Testament where the word please has been left out? 410 times. 410 times they don't say please. It should read here, he said, please take now your son, your only son. I've got compassion in my heart to you. I'm saying please. I'm in Genesis 22 verse 2, darling. Please, just on one thought, just go to Joshua for a moment, seven. This agony will soon finish. Seven, you don't know where I am? Yeah, if you just go to, just keep your finger there because we're coming back. Yeah. But if you just go, and we're finishing there. Joshua seven, verse 19. Joshua is speaking to Ahan. And Ahan has got the Babylonian garments, hasn't he? Or he's done something, didn't he bury the sin of Ahan? He did it yesterday. He said, we can't get a victory because the sin in the camp. Is that right? He says here, I want you to show you how the compassion of God, Joshua, a type of Jesus, implores Ahan. Then he said, Joshua 7, verse 19. This is one of the pleases that have been left out. But in verse 18, he brought his household near man by man. And Ahan was the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi. And Zabdi means Jehovah is my diary. Or Jehovah gives gifts. In Zabdi, Jehovah is my diary. He's my di dowry. Jehovah gives gifts. Why are you wanting Babylon when I'm giving everything to you, is what he's saying. So he comes along and Joshua said to Ahan, My son, I implore you, please give glory to the Lord. I implore you, give glory to the Lord, the God of Israel, and give praise to him and tell me now what you have done. Do not hide it from me. That word implore, if you'd like to look at it, 4994, is please in Hebrew. So although they're not writing it for us in this translation, but they're leaving out a very important word. And the word for please is um, a nun and an aleph, a nun which is, um, it, it means like with sperm, it means the, to um, the progenitor. N-A, can you see that? 4994 is the word please in Hebrew. For, na, yeah. Na, na, you'd say, na. Yeah. It's a primitive article of incitement and entreaty. What we're saying is, even in the King James Bible and in our, some of our translations, they're leaving out the word please. When God, he asked Abraham to sacrifice his son, and he said, please, take your son. I implore you. This is part and plan of my great redemption plan. So can you see there, N-A. And so 410 times, because the English translator did not understand um, they use the word implore or beseech. But really, some of it for us in modern day sounds better if it says, uh, Lord, please remember me when you come into your kingdom. Just to finish, let's go back to Genesis 21. Please. That lamb is not going to get off that throne until he comes to bring his freedom. To, I bet you've never been in a Bible study like this, Iris. She's doing very well. She's doing very well, Iris. You're doing very well, my darling. <coughs> Isn't she lovely? 
There's a per I know that we all know the names of Jehovah Jireh. I understand. The Genesis 21. Look at verse 8. And Abraham said, 22, Genesis 22, verse 8. Uh, sorry, I've moved from 21. I'm now on 22. Sorry. Abraham said, God will provide for himself a lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. And we say the word akadar is the word bound. He akadared his son, laughter, and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. The father has to lose his son, in a sense. And when you go down to Abraham, verse 14, because instead of the lamb, it was the ram. But when you get to 14, Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. After Jehovah Jireh, but you know when we do the names Jehovah Jireh, you have to know that because God's provided a lamb, you've got to go um, actually straight to what's the result of God providing a lamb. And this is the way the Jehovah's come, Exodus 15. Yeah. Somebody else's son, yeah. Your children won't die because my son died for you. Mm -hmm. We've been given everything because of his son's death. But it's the order that the, the Jehovah's come in. And then we finish on this. It's after he is the foundation, the lamb, I, the Lord will provide himself a lamb. That's the beginning. The result is the next one in Exodus 15, verse 26 which is Jehovah Rapha. I'm your healer because the lamb has been provided. The blood has been shed. Exodus 15, verse 26. And if you look, and Rodney will know this, when we say Rapha, R-O-P-H-E, it's not. It's Rapha Car. It's Rapha Car in my Hebrew Bible. So what does that tell us from what we've been learning about Hebrew? It's got an A-H on the end. It's the nurturer. I shall heal you under my wings. It's the same as Shekinah. Because the lamb, Jehovah Jireh, is, the next one has to follow, Rafi, Rafa Kar. Uh, it says, I, the Lord, am your Jehovah Rafa Kar. I am your healer. So you can say to somebody who's come to Jesus as the lamb, his, his life in you, his dancing life in you will bring about your healing. And I believe that with all my heart. Now, what's the next one then in the next? Yeah, yes, that's right. Yes, no, it's right. Yeah, laughing. Yeah, cheerful heart, just good like medicine to the bones. Just wish there was more cheerful hearts around me. I looked at something. I looked at that film last night, and I thought oh, I'd love a friend like the Green Book Man. I would. He was given a job to do to transport a black man down to deep south, and he did it so well and so wonderfully. He could get out of a car and he could actually say, "But come to my, come and meet my family," you know, because they joined together in this escapade, this thing that they'd gone on. And he may not have liked him to begin with, but then he watched the way he handled things and that. And they had a true friendship, didn't they? And they died within months of each other. That's the friend I want. That's the friend you want. Somebody who's going to do the... I'm not talking about cherishers. But do what? I want something with the people I work with. I want to be attracted to the Jesus in them. Do you understand? You want... Oh, my word, she's lovely. Oh, he's lovely. It's coming from his relationship with Christ. He's not irritable. He's not bad-tempered. He's not selfish. He isn't always moaning. It must be his relationship with the Lord. Do you think that? That's exactly how we should think. The lamb is the foundation, and the order of Scripture is the next one is the healer. Because he's the lamb provided on the mountain, you are healed. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And then you've got 70 palms, ministry growth. Go out then and win souls for Jesus. The next one we know is banner. His banner over me is love. Nissi, 
So what's the next one after the banner over me is love? His banner is extended in Exodus 17. You can see that. Exodus 17, verse 15. And will utterly blot out the memory of flesh, that's Amalek, from under heaven. So when you're struggling in the flesh, Carol, like you prayed this morning, you're my Jehovah Nissi. You've blotted out my flesh. Wave your banner. Sing Hosanna. Wave your banner. Hallelujah, Lord. My banner is displayed because of truth, and his banner over me is love. Did you hear that, devil? Flesh, be gone. Amen. Be subdued in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, of course. Of course. Yeah, I'd like to go on. I know we finished now, Al. But when he says, and then Moses built an altar, after he says, I will utterly blot the memory of flesh from under heaven, Amalek, Moses built an altar, named it the Lord is my banner. Okay, so what's the next one? You know the order in your heart. What's the next banner that you see in Scripture? It is, of course, the fifth judge. The fifth judge. Gideon, Gideon, he's the fifth judge. And he says, oh, Jehovah Shalom, you are my peace. You are my foundation. The Lamb is my foundation. You have healed me. You have utterly blotted out my flesh, and I'm waving my banner in your company, and you are now my Jehovah Shalom. You have given me your peace. This is the order they come in Scripture. But well, it's wonderful, isn't it? So it's Judges chapter 6, folks. Yeah? Is it worth looking at for a moment before we go? Yes, 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 Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Oh, we love you, Father. You've given us everything we need, and we're sometimes tempted, tempted to doubt your great love for us. We do. The enemy is raging all the time. And it says here, um, it is, isn't it, 24, Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and named it, the Lord is peace, 6, 24. But it comes from the lamb, it comes from the healing of the lamb, it comes from the, the ministry of God to blot out and wave your banner, then the peace. And this is how the Jews are going to enter into the tribulation because the next one is the Lord. He is my Rohi. He's my shepherd. I shall not want. And I know I shout because I struggle in life. So when I get to meetings, I'm intending to be very quiet. But the, it, there's a, do you understand? You want to be quiet. But you want to, sometimes I look at your miserable faces and I want to say, what is the matter with you? Do you understand? Not all your miserable faces. But I just look at, and I think, I know that you're untouched by God imploring you. And I think that's sad. Do you? <laughs> Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is Jehovah Rohi. Rohi, the Lord is my shepherd. And what's the declaration? The lamb is my foundation. His blood has healed me. His banner has dealt with my flesh. I've been given the peace when I thought I was useless. And now he's telling me, before I enter into the tribulation, if I am a Jewish person, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. And then we just finish off with the righteousness of God. Jehovah said, canoe, which is, as we know, Genesis, Jeremiah 23. But you see the order. They can't come in any other order. You can't have peace without the lamb. You can't be healed without the lamb. You can't go into the tribulation without the ministry of what God has already given to us. Isn't this wonderful here? What's the heading of Jeremiah 23? The coming Messiah. The righteous branch. Look what he says. Let's start. What a branch. My branch is blossoming. My branch is dancing in the wind. You know when they say that? The trees, they dance in the wind. God is happy inside of you, brothers and sisters. 
He's just ministering, ministering his life to you. And we looked at those numbers. To me, they, they paint the most marvelous pictures of his mercy. Look up, start at five. Behold, the days are coming. They haven't been yet. Declares the Lord, when I shall raise up for David a righteous branch, and he will reign as king and act wisely and do justice and righteousness in this land. In his days, Judah will be saved. Israel will dwell securely. And this is his name by which he will be called the Lord. Our righteousness is Jehovah Sid Canoe. And we all know where the last one is. Where is the last one? Ezekiel 48 Verse 35, the Lord shall be there. Where? Anywhere you want him to be. Invite him into every area of your life. Invite him into your purse. Invite him into your banknotes. Invite him into your miserable house. I go to some people's houses and the houses are sad. I go to some people's house and I know there's no life in Jesus going on in great freedom because they're bound. And I'm kind enough to tell them. To help them, to love him, to help them. I have got the lamb. I have got the healing power of the blood. I've got the milk lamb dancing inside of me. Okay, verse 35, we finish. The city shall be 18 cubits. Now, we could go into that because that's a wonderful number here. Round about. Remember the lady bowed over for 18 years? And only in the presence of Jesus could she be upright and straight? That is all a midrash on this here. The city shall be 18, forget the noughts, cubits, round about, and the name of the city from that day shall be Jehovah Shema. The Lord is there. Father, we just tramped, as Oswald Chambers would say, through your blessed, beloved word, and we bow our hearts before you. And we ask you to forgive us, Father, for our, the way that we are these wayward children. They, we are your children, even if we are your naughty children. But you love us, Father. You love us with the everlasting love of your lamb, your lamb. And when the enemy in the Old Testament is surrounding the people of Israel, they go to a seer. They go to a prophet. They go to someone, Samuel, someone who knows God, and they entreat him to help them. And he can do nothing but take a milk lamb and offer it up as a sacrifice. And as that sacrifice is going up in the midst of the enemies, it says, but the Lord thundered, bath cold, his voice was heard. He supernaturally helped. And they were able, with the ministry of the Lamb, to pursue their enemies to below the house of not a dead lamb now, not one who's just roasted in the flame of hell for us, but one who is dancing and alive. Oh, Father, then it says that the things were restored. You're a restoring Father. You're our blessed Father. You're our beloved, beloved, beloved. And you sent Jesus Christ, it says, to stick closer than a lover. That is one flesh. We have got a lover who sticks closer than a brother. That's the same word in the Hebrew. We've got a lover who sticks closer than a lover. How's that possible, Father? Not in our natural mind can we even perceive or conceive such a thought. But you're a God of holiness, a God of righteousness, a God of generosity, a God of mobility, a God who implores somebody in the sin of Babylon <coughs> to listen and to decide for the Lord and to repent. And you've given us that opportunity today. We don't have to do it publicly, Father, but in our own hearts, I hope that like we're just saying, I want to be right. I want to live correctly. I don't want to be bowed down by the enemies of Israel. The same old enemies, the world, the flesh, and the devil. I want to be in the victory 
of the lamb who became the lion, the only one with that perfect, perfect number. Lord, Lamech lived 770 years and gave birth to a son called Noah, meaning comfort and rest. When the lamb at the end of the book is still associated with the ewe lamb at the very beginning, once Isaac is born, to me, it's too wonderful for words. Fresh, your word comes to us fresh. Your word comes to us as life. And all we have to do is just receive that life again. The freshness of the word that you bring to us to calm our troubled heart and mind and to know the power that has been given on high. The lamb, the foundation has been given and the, the blood has been seen and our healing has come to pass. It has. And our flesh shall be blotted out from under heaven. And when we raise our hands, we're raising our banners and saying, the flesh in me says, keep your hand in the pocket. But the spirit in me says, raise your hand to Jesus. Hallelujah. Then is our peace, Jehovah Shalom. Then our shepherd has equipped his people in the tribulation to say, and they will be saying, Jehovah Rohi is my shepherd and I shall not want. He's going to lead me right into the valley of the shadow of death, but I will not fear no evil. His rod and his staff are going to come to me from Isaiah 53, and I'm going to acknowledge the lamb, the milk lamb, the lamb that Samuel took, the lamb of the covenant. Oh, Father, these words are too wonderful. They're too wonderful for words. If anyone's going to use words, it's going to be Christians who use these wonderful living words. Jehovah said, canoe, the Lord has become our righteousness. And for the end of the, at the end of the Ezekiel temple, the Lord is there. Where? Because for the first time, God, the Father, will make his habitation with man in the new Jerusalem on earth. Forgive us, Father, we pray, for our silliness, Lord. We're just silly. We're like the silly doves of Ephraim, but they weren't cut in two. They were protected supernaturally, and so are we. And for that, we say thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.